This is the owner with the biggest ego ever. And this guy drove Chef Ramsay up the wall with his sly and boorish remarks. In the 16th episode of season 1, viewers were introduced to a type of restaurant owner that they've never seen before. This guy is a cautionary tale for anyone who wants to venture into the culinary world. Amid the bustling restaurant capital of the world was a restaurant that was eager to take the top spot. However, all it managed to do was run into a loss. The Black Pearl was a lobster specialty restaurant located in downtown Manhattan. Back in the day, this was first started by owners David and Brian, who ran the entire business out of a shack. But don't underestimate the size of their establishment because it made thousands of dollars. Things escalated to such an extent that the duo decided to invite another investor to further scale things up. And that's when they met Greg. All three investors started off on a good note with a newly established restaurant right in the center of town. However, the relationship between the three owners was professional right up until the restaurant started to lose money. You're probably wondering how much. $250,000. And with each passing day, this number only grew. Naturally, the stress of running a restaurant that lost more money than it made took a toll on the relationship between the owners. They more or less stopped communicating with each other and only spoke via email if it was required. Uh, that's not exactly the best kind of partnership if you ask me. In fact, all of these signs indicate that the trio were setting themselves up for doom. But let's hear from the staff what they thought about the three owners. According to the employees, Brian was a silent partner who would bail if he had the choice. Greg was the hardest working owner, but when it came to making decisions, he often got frustrated, which is why he made none. And then there was David. Well, pretty much everyone felt the same way about this owner. They hated him. He made the work environment rather difficult for the staff, and this is what one of them had to say about him. Out of the three owners, I like David the least because his ego tends to get in the way of a healthy atmosphere. But that's not to say that the place had absolutely no hope. The staff believed that things could turn around if someone managed to beat some sense into the three owners. Maybe this could get them to work together again, but it's easier said than done. So was Chef Ramsay really up for the challenge? Would he be able to deal with these stubborn owners who had three different ways of running the place? Oh, you'll be surprised how things turn out. Once Chef Ramsay arrived, the staff members jumped at the opportunity to complain about each and every bit of their concerns. And this primarily had to do with the management, or should I say, the lack of it. When Chef Ramsay asked them how many times the owners were at the restaurant, this is what one of them had to say. No, they're never here together. No. They're never here together. No. Just as Chef Ramsay continued to talk with the staff, one of the owners walked through the doors. Now, it was unusual of him to do so, and you can say that just by looking at the staff's expressions. But to make things even worse, he introduced himself as one of the three owners who regularly took charge of the restaurant. Uh, wait, that's not what Chef Ramsay just heard, right? So, who was lying? The owner who just walked in, or the staff members? You'll soon find out. So, before I continue, let me make some introductions here. The owner who just walked in with that smug attitude right from the start is the star of today's video, David Leonard. Of course he knew Chef Ramsay was expected to visit the Black Pearl, which is why he was here in the first place. But David seemed threatened. For what reason? It's pretty unclear. With hardly a few words exchanged between the two, this is what David thought about his interaction with Chef Ramsay. I thought he seemed a bit confrontational. That was not very pleasant. But otherwise, I really had no impression of him. But why feel threatened by someone who is only there to help? Chef Ramsay was about to find this out the hard way. But first, he had to figure out if the food was any good. And so, Chef Ramsay ordered the lobster mac and cheese, a clam chowder, and finished it off with a lobster roll. This was supposedly the best item on the menu. And during that time, Chef Ramsay couldn't help but take in the wacky decor while he waited for his grub. He took note of the funky bar in the interior, which clearly looked like it was put together by three different people with three unique visions. Talk about a decorating disaster! If your mouth was watering just by hearing the names of the food we listed, hold it right there. Since this is what Chef Ramsay had to say. What a shame. Ouch. That's the shortest way anyone could criticize food. Chef Ramsay was clearly disappointed. This restaurant was located in the food hub of the world, and all they really served was watery soup? Calling out the bland food, Chef Ramsay was now concerned about the fate of this seafood restaurant. But before that, he got to meet the next owner, Greg. So, where was the third one actually? Well, uh, it looks like he doesn't give a damn about Chef Ramsay or the restaurant. Anyway, when Chef Ramsay dug into his next order, this was his feedback. The mussels can't taste of mussels because of stupid. Thai curry Bangkok broth. 
mac and cheese. It's chewy and rich and the chowder, that watery. It's not how a seafood restaurant should run. Now, Chef Ramsay's known for his brutal honesty, but did you really think that was all? Wait till you hear his review of the lobster rolls. Horrible. Soaking wet bread. It's like eating a f wet diaper. Yikes. That's not what you like to hear about your specialty. It must have really tasted horrible. I mean, all of that complex decoration to plate the dish made no sense when there was nothing good about it. It was just a mound of unseasoned lobsters. While Chef Ramsay outright refused to continue tasting anything, the owners were busy cracking jokes at the back. David wants to know, is he paying for this? You should definitely give, yeah, him give him a check. check. <laughs> that. Be... But Chef Ramsay had to address the issue. This was no laughing matter. He gathered all three owners and asked David, who oversaw the food, why he didn't season his cooking. I mean, when the best items on your menu are absolutely bland, you have a lot to answer for. David justified himself by saying that most of his recipes were inspired from Maine, and that's exactly why they weren't seasoned. But who is he trying to fool? Chef Ramsay refused to take any of his lame excuses. But that didn't stop the arrogant owner from saying this. Chef Ramsay didn't like our lobster roll, and he said he's lived in Maine for three months. But if he'd lived in Maine for three months, he'd know that a lobster roll is exactly the way we make it. Can you believe the audacity of this guy? The head chef, however, testified to David's inability to take constructive criticism. He even referred to him as a know-it-all. After a frustrating conversation with the feuding owners, Chef Ramsay was skeptical of the restaurant getting back on its feet. He rightly assessed David's incompetence and made it clear that he didn't trust him at all. A restaurant run by three passionate owners, no chance. Right, he works two days a week. David, well, I don't trust him one little inch. As Chef Ramsay left for the day, he came to one conclusion. This is what he thought about the owners. Basically, in a nutshell, sleepy, dopey, and grumpy. Who am I? It's no white. Chef Ramsay later came by to see how the restaurant would perform on a busy night with all three owners present. Now, let me remind you that this isn't a normal scenario, so expect things to get heated really quickly. Chef Ramsay noticed that David was in the kitchen working on expediting orders. But his lack of confidence manifested in the dishes that he prepared, leading to a lot of them being sent back. Greg, who was out of his comfort zone in the kitchen, decided to wander around the dining area. However, when a customer sent back a dish, instead of fixing the problem, guess what David did? He chose to argue with him. His lack of accountability really showed what kind of an owner he was. Hear it from one of the staff members yourselves. According to him, he already knew that Chef Ramsay didn't like David very much, and this was the reason for him to believe so. Chef Ramsay has a detector, and David can be full of it sometimes. Well, that's spot on. With strange smells coming from the food and grit in the muscles, Chef Ramsay finally had enough. David was forced to answer why he expedited the orders without doing a proper quality check. And when he didn't reply responsibly, this is what Chef Ramsay had to say. Can you stop being a slippery eel for 15 minutes in front of your team? But wait, hold on. David wasn't someone who would just bow down to criticism. He retorted back with the same intensity, if not more, by saying this. Gordon, the f truth is that yes. I'm back there when it's busy every f that I work. Oh, don't be surprised by this. Cause, well, David was way more full of BS than you'd ever think. Turns out, he was falsely advertising and selling Canadian lobster as Maine lobster. Chef Ramsay didn't go easy on him. Holy sh**. The award-winning Maine lobster roll is Canadian. David wasn't just egotistical, but also ignorant. And I think he's fraudulent too. For the first time in Black Pearl's history, Chef Ramsay called for a staff meeting. That doesn't shock me. It's clear from the fact that the restaurant was very poorly managed. During this meeting, Chef Ramsay encouraged the staff members to write down questions that they'd like the owners to address. One of the employees asked David why there was no strict policy of wearing aprons. Fair enough. This pertains to the restaurant's hygiene and quality control. But like always, David just dodged the question. Not only this, but he was disrespectful towards the staff. However, Chef Ramsay didn't tolerate this and literally chewed him out. You're great at beating around the bush, you know that? No. Ah. In front of everybody, why can't you answer the f question? Chef Ramsay called him out on his attitude in the sassiest way possible. I mean, David was the one who was struggling and called Ramsay for his help. And now he was acting up? Not cool. Here's what he should have done. He should have just dropped the ego and made the best of this man's expertise. But people like David were on some high horse. He was a world-class prick, but Chef Ramsay was having none of it. And during the entire episode, he kept calling him out on his BS. Finally, they tackled the elephant in the room, the restaurant was in desperate need of a general manager. 
one of the staff members suggested that one of the owners step up and take on the role. The owners then started discussing who would be the best fit for the job. And as they talked, Chef Ramsay put together a new special for that night's menu. During the busy dinner rush, Brian was sent home while Greg was shining with the customers, showing off his strengths. On the other hand, David was causing chaos in the kitchen by insulting staff members and talking down to customers in the dining area. It was a night of contrasting performances. At the end of the dinner rush, the staff made their choice. They voted for Greg to be the new general manager of the restaurant. Brian and David then signed the papers to make it official. During the night, the restaurant also underwent a transformation with a fresh new look suggested by Chef Ramsay. However, David wasn't thrilled with the changes. As you'd expect, he was resistant to helpful advice and wasn't a fan of the new Lobster Claw game. He hated the idea of a guy in a lobster costume handing out flyers in Times Square to market the restaurant. Come on, that's great! David also revealed something big hours before the relaunch. It was that he didn't like the new menu items that Chef Ramsay had put together. Not very good. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Those scallops are so good. Looks like he had some kind of personal vendetta at this point. When the big day had finally arrived, everyone was excited and eager to see the improvements that were made. But as soon as the dinner rush began, it was clear that things weren't going to go according to plan. First of all, the kitchen was a mess, orders were piling up, and it was taking forever for the food to get out to the customers. Chef Ramsay was starting to get a little worried, but he had high hopes for the Black Pearl. But he could see that Greg, who was supposed to be in charge of the kitchen, was struggling to keep up. While the kitchen was basically falling apart, Brian and David just sat in the dining room complaining about the new coleslaw. However, despite the chaos, the customers were surprisingly pleased with their food once it arrived. The flavors were on point and everyone seemed to be having a good time. But Chef Ramsay wasn't convinced that things were on the right track. He had some strong opinions about each of the owners and wasn't afraid to share them. He called Brian lazy, saying that he needed to step things up and should take things seriously if he wanted to succeed. On the other hand, he was a bit more optimistic about Greg. He could see that Greg had a big heart and was really passionate about the restaurant, but he just wasn't sure if he had the skills to run things in the kitchen. And then there was David, who Ramsay had low expectations for. He didn't seem to care about the restaurant since he was more focused on arguing with customers and making things difficult for everyone else. Jeff Ramsay was worried about the future of the Black Pearl if David remained on the team. He couldn't imagine how the restaurant could succeed with someone so negative and disengaged. And just as Chef Ramsay expected, only four days after the episode aired, the restaurant closed due to their sales getting halved. Yep, Black Pearl is long gone. As of 2022, its New York location is now occupied by a new restaurant called the Flatteron Room. It wasn't on Chef Ramsay. He did everything he could. But David was a pompous a-hole who couldn't keep things together. And surprise, surprise, he made a rant blaming Kitchen Nightmares where he repeatedly insulted Chef Ramsay by referring to him as Gordy. Real mature, man. One thing that enraged me in this rant was that he made a public death threat by saying, while I hope Gordon needs an untimely death so I can dance on his grave, it's time to move on. Are these the thoughts of a well-adjusted, rational person capable of running a business? No. He's a textbook narcissist who blamed Kitchen Nightmares for the downfall of his restaurant. And guess what he's up to now? He's trying his hardest to launch a music career and even has a website of his own which according to a verified user on Reddit, is rigged. Yeah, if you thought this guy couldn't stoop any lower, you were wrong my friend. He's allegedly rigged his website so that if you try to use the contact form, it'll throw a fake Trojan virus at you. This creep is supposedly trying to scare people into paying a fake ransom by making it look like their computer is infected. It's a new low for a reality TV star, and it's illegal too. Coming to a more important question, did you wonder if Chef Ramsay visited Black Pearl again? But before that, did you forget something? It looks like you forgot to leave a like on my video. This is the perfect opportunity to do that since you watched until now. While you're at it, subscribe for more content like this. With that out of the way, let's see what Chef Ramsay came across at the location of Black Pearl. Well, it's a bit of a mixed story. He tried to go back in the 13th season of Kitchen Nightmares, but unfortunately, like I said, the Black Pearl closed four days after the episode aired. But here's the interesting part. Kitchen Nightmares did film an episode where Ramsay visited the old Black Pearl location and checked out the new restaurant that took its place. Unfortunately, that restaurant is also closed now. Well, what about the other owners in this episode? After the Black Pearl closed, Greg went on to have a long and successful career as the general manager of various restaurants in New York City. Can you believe that? 
Yeah, he was the general manager at Brasilia Cafe, Bellini Restaurant, and even Hakkasan, New York City. He must have been doing something right. And he really deserves it. He was empathetic and caring. According to his LinkedIn page, his last job ended in June of 2018. So I'm curious to see where his life is now. Do you have any updates? Oh, by the way, do any of you guys listen to David's music? I'm really curious if anyone does. Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, guys.